Hi everyone, today I want to demonstrate how to make a 100% whole wheat sourdough bread in one day with a pretty simple straightforward process, no particular fancy equipment needed. If I've got time on the weekend, like today is a Sunday, it's about 9.30 in the morning, if I'm home during the day, this is the process that I'll use and I'll get a really um, good result with the bread. Um, my other videos you've seen, they're more um, designed for use during the week when I'm busy. You know, I, I use the fridge and I use all different methods to be able to make my bread around a work schedule. But if I'm home during the day, this is how I do it and this is the easy way. So I'm using grinding my own wheat for this, um, but you know, obviously not everybody's going to have a meal and be able to do that. Uh, the best flour to use for this is stone ground whole wheat flour. So buy a hard uh, wheat flour, like a, a flour that's designed for bread making if you can. Um, you might see it in health food shops in, in the bulk bin sort of section. You might say whole wheat, stone ground whole wheat bread flour, that kind of thing. For Australians, in the supermarket you'll find wholemeal flour. It's not the same thing. <laughs> it's, it's fine to use if that's what you've got. Um, and that's okay, but it's, it is different to the whole grain flour. It is actually refined flour with the bran added back in. So if you can find stone ground whole wheat flour, you'll, you'll probably be much more likely to get the whole grain, um, all the different parts of the grain in the flour, which uh, gives you the best nutrition. So I'm going to mill my wheat. This is 500 grams of wheat, so that's going to give me pretty close to 500 grams of flour. Um, I'm putting my little earmuffs on here because I have really sensitive hearing and I actually have some hearing loss in this ear show. I want to um, protect my hearing. This meal is not particularly loud, but I just am very cautious with my hearing. So this is my Mock Mill 200, which is amazing. I've had it for a year now. I absolutely love it. I use it multiple times every week. So I'm just going to mill this on the finest setting and while I do that I'm going to um, measure out my water and then we'll do the next step. Here we go. Okay, so here's my flour, freshly milled. It's quite warm, uh, which is which is good for a one-day bread because you you know your ingredients have got a little bit of warmth to them, which helps the fermentation. So the first step in making this bread, once you have your flour, 500 grams of flour, is to just add the water, and we're going to do what's called an autolyse, which is um, soaking the water with the flour. Um, just for half an hour to an hour and what that does is it helps really fully hydrate all the bran and all of the um, fibrous um, particles in the flour and it also helps some enzyme activity to, to take place in the you know with the flour and the water um, which brings out the sweetness in the dough which um, can be held back a little bit if you add the starter and the salt in initially so I'm doing this pre-soaking so this is 400 and 450 grams of water to 500 grams of flour. So that's a 90% um, amount, 90% water of the total flour amount. In other words, roughly 90% hydration. You will have to use different amounts of water for the flour that you're using. My flour is so thirsty, it just loves the water. So you just add that in. Done, really simple, and then mix it up. So just the flour and the water. This is really important. This does make a big difference to the finished quality of this bread. You can sort of see that texture, it's really soft. It mixes up really quickly. That's all you gotta do. You just gotta get everything a little bit wet. Um, I'll just like to scrape the dry bits down with my trusty old spatula which thankfully is still going um, 
that's it. So that's the first step. Just cover up your dough. I found these silicon covers in an op shop, which is awesome. I love them. So I just put that on the top and then leave that. I'll be back in half an hour for the next step. Okay, so it's been half an hour. The flour and the water have been soaking for that amount of time. Um, doesn't look particularly interesting, but you'll see that the texture of this dough is um, quite nice. It's sort of um, pretty stretchy already, which is great. So the next step is to just mix in the starter and the salt. So, you know, you could do this in a mixer if you had a mixer. I have a mixer, but I, I tend to just do it by hand. I find that's a pretty straightforward way to do it. Um, you could use a dough whisk if you wanted to. This is the way that I like to do it. I find that it's pretty easy. So I just tip that dough out. Oh, such good dough. And then I'm adding my starter. This is 100 grams of whole wheat sourdough starter. Um, it's not particularly runny, as you can see. It's pretty stiff. I would say, I didn't weigh it, but I'd say it's probably about 70%, 60 to 70% hydration maybe, but that is ripe sourdough starter there. So I just kind of plonk that on the top. And then I knead that in just a little bit. You can see already how kind of um, extensible this dough is. It's brilliant. Um, it firm, my my uh, flour is very strong. My wheat is, is very high protein and quite strong. So it, it's quite firm. Um, once you've got the starter kind of folded in a little bit, then put the salt on. This is nine grams of salt. It's just Himalayan pink salt. Just use whatever salt you've got. Um, I just put that on and then I just knead this really just for a few minutes till it comes together. You see initially with this dough, I showed this in my other whole wheat sourdough video as well, it starts off quite smooth. Um, the dough is very smooth after the autolyse. Um, but as you knead in the starter and the salt, it becomes sticky. And that's how I tell that I've got it mixed in properly. So it becomes very, very sticky and hard to handle. And that's when I know it's mixed. So as I say in my other video too, you know, this, this process here isn't really about um, developing gluten in the dough. Because we're going to do that through using stretch and folds in this video. Um, it's more just about making sure that the starter and the salt are mixed in very thoroughly. So you can see it's quite smooth. It's not sticking in a bad way or anything, but you watch, it'll get really sticky. Um, and I think that's probably to do with the salt mixing in. It Salt sort of draws out some of the moisture in the dough, um, makes it really sticky. But you'll see, once I start doing the stretch and folds through the bulk fermentation part of this, which is the next step, you'll see that it very quickly becomes lovely, smooth dough again. So this usually only takes a minute or two. You can see my <laughs> kind of um, slightly dodgy kneading technique. I'm really just trying to mix it and, you know, I like to do things the easy way if I can, so this is just my quick and easy way to do it. You, as I said, you could use a mixer. I do have a KitchenAid stand mixer that I use sometimes, but that's more washing up. I find it quite easy just to do this on the bench Ugh. and then just clean the bench. So it's starting to get really sticky, nearly there, a little bit more. Um, Oh, gosh, it's a bit of a workout, and I'm a bit short, so it would probably be better if I was this tall. <laughs> so I'm gonna, sometimes I stand on my tippy toes. Years ago, when I, well, a long time ago, when I was making bread, you know, yeast breads, whole wheat breads, and I used to knead them 
for 20 minutes, half an hour or so to get the gluten development. I used to stand on a little stool <laughs> to make me a little bit taller so that I had that kind of height over the bench. Anyway, that's another story. So there you go. And see how it's got really sticky and tacky again? It's lost its sort of smoothness. That's how you know that the starter and salt are mixed in. So what we do now is just scrape down your bench, put your dough back into your bowl. Um, I just use a bench scraper or whatever to get it all off. Look at that, hardly any cleaning up. You can scrape your hands too if you want. Um, cover that up again and then we're going to let it rest for maybe 10-15 minutes or so and then I'll start the stretching and folding and that's what we're going to do is I'll show it stretch stretch and fold the dough throughout the bulk fermentation um, time which today you know just depends on the weather it might be five hours it might be eight hours I'm not sure um, will um, that will that will really develop a beautiful texture and structure in the dough it'll be lovely and elastic and it will help it to um, have a lovely nice open crumb hopefully as well so we'll just let that rest for a little bit and then I'll come back and then usually every half an hour I come back and stretch and fold the dough so I'll show you that through the day all right so the dough has been um, resting just for 15-20 minutes or so it doesn't really matter probably at least 10 minutes just to let it kind of relax now we're going to start the stretches and folds so you just do this throughout the day do it at least three times um, three or four or five times is probably good um, and, and start it at the beginning of the bulk fermentation if you can so you just need a wet hand I'll just demonstrate it on the side hopefully you can see it so just wet your hand so it doesn't stick now all you do is you grab the side of the dough, pull it up, try not to tear it, just pull it up gently and fold it onto itself and go around, you just go around the dough until you've pulled all the sides into the middle. Um, you'll feel it start to resist, see how that one is not pulling up as high? Once you feel that resistance, you stop, that's it. So that's one round of stretches and folds. Put your lid back on, put your timer on for another half an hour, come back and do that again in another half an hour. Here we are for the second round of stretch and folds. It's been half an hour. Just do the same again, get a wet hand, grab the dough, pull it up, fold it down on itself. That was quite soft. Um, but you'll watch this will firm up further as we go along. There we go. It's usually about four lots that you can do before it starts to resist. So that's all you do. Back again in half an hour. And here we are for the third stretch and fold. And stretch and fold number four. The dough is um, gaining strength and starting to look quite smooth now. I'm going to keep going with the stretch and folds, probably do a few more. Well, it's been well over an hour since I did the last stretch and fold, the fourth one. I've been watching a movie and just relaxing, so I've just let the dough go. I will do another one now, but I just wanted to show you um, the dough is starting to get quite bubbly. It's, it's, um, the bulk fermentation is going really well, so I'm going to do another stretch and fold. And then I'm probably going to just leave it for maybe another half to an hour and then come and shape the dough and get it ready for baking. 
Uh, I don't need to leave it too much longer than that. It's definitely getting puffy and full of air. Um, it's getting a kind of a nice gelatinous feel to it. It's nice and jiggly. It's looking great. So yeah, I'll probably leave that for half an hour. I might set the timer and um, come back and we'll do the shaping. It's going well. All right, so it's um, after three o'clock. It's about 10 past three in the afternoon. Um, the dough is well and truly getting bubbly. So the bulk fermentation, I'm really happy with that. I'm just gonna shape it now. I'm going to turn the camera around and give you a bit more of a close up of the shaping. It's looking good. So to shape this dough, the first thing I do is just, um, look how big and jiggly that is. The first thing I do is just um, put a little bit of water on the bench and then see this top side of the dough, this is like the seam side, I've always been uh, stretching and folding from the outside in, so this is the, the seam side. We always want to keep shaping in from the outside in. So as I tip this out of the dough, out of the bowl, it's going to fall kind of seam side down so what we want to do is have it seam side up again after that so I just get my damp hands and damp spatula and I'm just gonna tip it over like that now this is the first shaping so I always have my water spray bottle handy and what I want to do is just look at the air bubbles in that. Just gently pull it out and fold it in on itself. It's kind of like another stretch and fold. But we're doing it on the bench this time. And you just want to pull that in until you kind of feel it tighten. Flip it back over and give it a little, a little pull on the bench just to create a bit of tension in the surface and that is your first shaping. Cover that up straight away. It's a really dry day here today so I don't want my dough to dry out. Cover that up with your bowl and then let it rest for 15 minutes and come back and do the final shaping. Okay so I'm back for the final shaping. It's been about 15 minutes. Um, you can see the dough has really relaxed again. We're just going to give it one more final shape and then put it into a proving basket to bake. Um, this is a plastic German banneton that I've got that I sometimes use and sometimes flour it. But I'm going to take the easy way out today and use um, baking paper. So I'll show you what I do. Um, again, you need wet hands. And having a bit of water on the bench around the dough is helpful for this. So again, the seam seams are underneath so we need to flip the dough and then um, do that final shaping from the outside in again. So I'm just going to wet my spatula as well and we'll try and gently flip this dough over. Now, hmm, final shaping. There's lots of different ways to do it. I'm just going to go on autopilot. This is what I normally do. Um, just gently make another ball, basically, same as what I did before. Try not to degas the dough too much. Um, and because I'm going to use a kind of an oblong shape banneton, when I do this final part, I'm just going to shape it into a kind of an oblong, oblong shape. It's a little bit untidy at that end, but that's all right. There's lots so many different ways you can do this. This is really the easy way to shape and if you're gonna put it in um, baking paper like I am, that's kind of all you need to do. If you're gonna tip that over and put it in a banneton upside down, then you know you need to make sure the seams are sealed a bit better than I'm doing. But I'm gonna do this really easy way. It's a bit more foolproof. Uh, you get a bit easier to get a a more consistent result without too much sort of reliance on excellent technique which I don't have. So, baking paper, 
which I wet. You would have seen that trick in other videos. And then wet my hands again and just transfer this. That's enough uh, tension for me. Just transferring that on there. And then I'm just going to lift this and use the banneton as a, as a form just to hold the shape. So I get my spatula and just push out those creases in the paper. You know, this is not the perfect dough, but I'm not really into perfection. I'm more into getting the best um, loaf that I can get with the least amount of effort. <laughs> I don't want to spend every minute of, of my weekends kind of fussing over dough. So that's going to make a really decent loaf. You can see that's quite airy and quite jiggly as it is. So we'll do the final proofing now. So the final rising before we bake it. I'm going to bake this loaf in this glass baker. It's a bit dusty. Um, so, you know, when this is uh, getting close to being ready, I'll put this in the oven and preheat it and we'll bake the dough. So... I'll probably leave this now. I'm going to put this in in something covered in a, inside another baker, I'd say, just to, to keep it nice and moist while it proves. I'll probably check it every half hour uh, and I'll come back when it's ready to go in the oven. Okay, so it's now five o'clock. It's the end of the day and the bread is ready to be baked. I've just had it um, sitting inside this roaster for the final proof it's not hot or anything so it's just about doubled in size it's pretty jiggly um, that's the best way that I judge whether or not it's ready generally by the size and if it's starting to look quite light and bubbly so I'll get my roaster out now and we'll put it in and we'll bake it this is very hot the oven has been preheating for about 20 minutes to 230 degrees Celsius. So I'm just going to lift this in. This baker is kind of um, kind of half acting as a, a bread pan um, and half not. It's, it is hot going to hold the shape of the loaf, but I'm still going to get a nice rustic hopefully open kind of a loaf. I'm going to give that a bit of a spray with water just to help the steam. You can see it in there. And then cover it up. I'm not going to score this loaf. I have a feeling that if I score that loaf it's going to actually reduce the oven spring. Um, it's a fairly slack-ish dough. Um, I only score my loaves if I think that they're really going to spring up, but that to me looks like it's a bit sort of floppy, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to score it. And hopefully that'll hold it together and give it a nice big rise. So I'm going to put that in the oven now with the lid on for 15 minutes, and we'll come back. Here's the bread after 15 minutes. Now I'm taking the lid off. It's got quite a nice looking rise there. It's a nice size loaf so hopefully it'll be kind of airy inside. I'll put it back in there now for probably another 15-20 minutes to brown up and finish cooking. It's excellent. And here it is. Here is the final loaf. It looks beautiful. It's got a lovely golden crust. It's got a really nice rise. I'm so glad I didn't score that. If I had scored that loaf, it probably wouldn't have opened up too much. Um, I think not scoring it helped keep the, the tension in the surface, which does actually kind of hold it together and allow it to spring more. And I found that that's even more important when you're dealing with 100% whole wheat loaves. Um, whole grain sourdough baking is a bit different to when you're using refined flour. So there you go. I'm so happy with that. I love that. That looks really good. I'm really keen to see it um, inside. I'm just going to take that out. Get rid of this hot pot. Okay, and now I'll take off this paper. Yep. 
tiny look, a little bit pale looking on the bottom, but that's okay. I'm pretty sure it's cooked, cooked really well. Um, and there you go. There is the loaf of bread. All done. Looks good. It's got a nice little blistery crust. I'm going to let that cool overnight and come back tomorrow morning and cut it open so you can see what it's like on the inside. Fingers crossed it's as good as I think it might be. Okay, see you in the morning. Good morning. Well, it's time to cut this bread. I'm going to try and do this right-handed, which is going to be a bit difficult because I'm left-handed, but we'll see how it goes. Oh, that feels, that feels very awkward. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Okay. There you go. Looks pretty good. It's pretty open crumb. I'll crumb cut one more on this side. There you go. There's a third one. It's a pretty nice, um, light, squishy whole wheat bread. Um, nice and moist, not too, not gummy at all. Um, got some nice holes in there. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that for a one day loaf. Very nice. So that's how I do it. Um, you know, depending on the day, on the temperature, there's so many factors that come into play with sourdough bread making, you're going to, you're going to get a different result all the time. And it really does depend on the flour you're using as well. But the key principles here is to use enough water so that you can really get a good stretching and folding going. That's hard to do with a, um, a drier dough. Um, you have to be aware that fermentation does generally take place a bit faster with um, whole wheat flours particularly freshly milled. Um, the other really important um, factor with this is the autolyse, so the soaking of the flour and the water first before you mix any starter or salt in, that makes a big difference. Um, so yeah, all these factors come into play. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope it's useful for some of you. Uh, just trying to show different ways that you can do this. Anyway, thank you, for, thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed making this, so hopefully I can make more and get a bit more confident with my face in front of the camera. Thanks everyone. Bye.